Cycling can feel a bit bonkers at times, but in a way, it's what makes it the sport we love. And anyway, underneath the surface, everything is going as it should be. It all makes sense. But, but does it? You'd be forgiven for thinking there are a couple of things we still don't really add up. And in this video, we're gonna list a few of them. Hopefully, clear any misconceptions up. Here we are on a fine winter morning on the Côte de Bath, the steepest gradient in the city. Found in the southwest of England, it hosts a number of climbs, but this one is the toughest, and our brave GCM presenter, Conor Dunn, is about to take it on today to see if he can smash his personal best. He's on the start line, the bottom of the climb now, and he's about to clip in to his clipless pedals. Wait, what? Clipless pedals that you clip into. Yeah, I know it sounds strange, but the name originates from the fact that people used to use in yesteryear toe straps. So if it would go in, you clip yourself in with a toe strap on the front, then came about the clipless pedal, which had the cleat underneath the shoe. You literally clipped into it, but it replaced those toe straps and clips. So the pedal became clipless. Make sense now? Bigger tyres need to be run at lower pressures. I'm still struggling to get my head around this one, so surely a bigger tyre would need more air. It's a confusing topic. So let's head over to GCN's resident tech expert to explain, and hopefully enlighten us all. Is this thing on? Yeah, right. Okay, Colin, let me dive in here and help you. A real life Google search, if you will. First thing we need to understand is what we're actually talking about when we say the word pressure in relation to our bike tires. It simply means the amount of force exerted on the sidewalls of our tires from the air which is fitted inside. Typically it's measured in PSI or bar and the higher the pressure, the more solid it makes our tires feel. Now when it comes to the theory of using larger volume and lower pressure tires, this is down to something called the hoop stress. Now I won't dive into sort of the research and the science and the maths behind this, but what hoop stress is relating to is that for any given pressure inside a cylinder, the larger the volume inside the cylinder, the greater the pressure on the cylinder walls. Now let me put this into context of our tire. So if we had a tire with a set volume and we pumped it up to 100 PSI, and then if we had our second tire, which was half of the volume, and so half the size inside, and we pumped it up to the same 100 PSI, the pressure and the force exerted on the cylinder walls, so the sides of our tire, will be twice as high, and, res and will result in a tire which feels twice as hard. And that force is a large amount to be put onto the sidewalls of our tires and the wheel itself. So in order to keep the force similar, which is on the sidewalls of our tires and the wheels, at a higher volume, we have to use a lower pressure so that we have comparable results. Now, in terms of why a lower pressure is better, it simply allows your tyre to deform more, increase in the contact patch on the ground, and the deformation of the sidewall of the tyre increases the level of comfort we have when we're cycling along on the bumpy roads. Right, science lesson over. Time to wake up. Back to you, Connor. Thank thanks, Alex. I understand. Do you understand? Yep, yep, got that. I think I've got that. I think I've got that. I'm clever. <laughs> Many non cyclists look at a road bike saddle and think, how can you sit on it? It resembles a plank of wood. How hard is that saddle? The truth is, it's, it's, it is hard, but it's a lot more comfortable than a plank of wood. A soft saddle, yes. From the outside, it looks like it's going to be the comfier option, but trust me, it's not. Tried it, chafing, all the other things. Just doesn't work. Harder saddle. It's the way to go if you're looking for the comfort. Plus, paired with a nice, comfortable chamois, it's a way to avoid any sort of saddle sore discomfort, and also, best way to put the power down through the pedals in a nice, efficient manner. One rather strange aspect of cycling is the fact that we love to suffer. We love the suffering and we whoo, 
actively seek out the toughest climbs, the steepest gradients, the hardest routes, because we love to do so. It's a weird kind of contrast. I think it's the challenge, it's the challenge aspect. It's even when you're on your hardest little moments that there's a small party that realizes you're having the best time ever. It's what it's all about for me. Even if you do like to, to huff and puff in your moment. Whew. All right, come on, here we go, this is a steeper one. I was in the peloton, having a bad day, I got dropped. Found myself in the groupetto, but yeah, I was out of that as well. The problem lies in the fact I missed the bid on in the feed zone. My swan, yeah, just wasn't there. Wasn't there at all, and I bonked. Bonked beyond belief. Whew. Jeepers, I need a soda. Cycling is full of foreign words as the sport developed around the world and the epicenter of the road racing scene can be found in continental Europe. As a result, you can find many French, Italian and other European words in the cycling dictionary. So even if you don't parlay Francais, you can still go and ride around a velodrome. Just don't ask me where, where Bonk comes from. Here's another strange one for you. Riding slowly actually makes you faster, and it is legit, because Sai interviewed today Pagaccia's coach Inigo San Milan recently on the benefits of zone two training. That's riding at much lower intensities than if you're really pushing yourself to your limit, and it works. I mean, today's on the Tour de France, so who better to try it out? I know you don't have to ride this slow, you have to go a little bit, a little bit faster, but watch Sai's video, pretty interesting stuff. Pros are retiring and racing on gravel. 200 mile epic events, hard stuff in retirement. Doesn't quite make sense, does it? Now I'm not knocking gravel, it's amazing. I love gravel, but it does seem a bit weird from the outside to, to retire and then race something that's arguably harder than what you retired from. I think it's because gravel racing is a bit fresher than road racing, perhaps it's a bit different to what pros have experienced in the past. It's not the same buffet, the same race every single year. And it's, it's different. It's out there riding with everyone as well. These big mass start cool events. Maybe, maybe I should go and do one now. I think I will. All right, stay tuned. <laughs> Bike racing has many different nuances and the tactics can look a little bit confusing at times, mainly because the strongest doesn't always win, although that particular example, I wasn't beating that one. She absolutely destroyed me there. But it is the case in professional bike races because you can have the best VO2 max, the best power to weight, but if you don't have the right tactics, you're not going to win the bike race. It's a game of chess on wheels. So Whilst it may look strange every plays cat and mouse, there is a lot of logic to it. You can't just rely on the jambons or the legs, you need your head as well. There you go, a few things that, on the face of it, seem a little nonsensical, but really, you know, perfect sense in the cycle. Well, let us know in the comment section down below there if we've missed anything or there's maybe something you're not quite sure of, which does seem a bit wacky. As always, we hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more cycling content. Thanks for watching. Right now though, I'm gonna get myself out of my bonk and off my plank of wood. Do my bike for that. Ta-ta!